Hello and welcome to this follow-up video of the bit swapper crusher uh, sample rate reducer. Uh, so here's the final panel that I made for this. Uh, a couple of thing things. Uh, I built, I, I made the panel before I was completely done with the uh, circuit. Uh, so there's a sample rate CV input here. Uh, so this was supposed to be able to be CV controllable, but unfortunately I have not managed to uh, create that function. So sadly it is now just the sample rate uh, switch of the LTC 1799 clock. Uh, I'll show you this in the rack as well. I think it's much more easy to understand what all the switches and knobs do. So there's an input level, an output level, the sample rate, the same as we did before, uh, and then I've added a low pass filter, which is switchable on and off because sometimes you want that gritty sound and then you turn it off and if you want to smooth the sound out, you turn it on. So that's it. And all the swaps and the crushes of the bits. And for this I've also made the schematics. And because there's a lot going on, I've simplified it a bit. Uh, so here's the ADC 0809 where the audio input comes in on input 3 uh, and the, the input is dependent on these here, the add A, B and C. So these are the address pins of which input we're using. So by connecting them at A to plus 5, B to plus 5 and C to ground you get uh, input 3. So that's the reason for that. Which is also explained here. Pin 23 to 25 sets the input. Um, some simple connections. The clock input, this is the example clock uh, using the LTC1799. I was hoping and also I even made a, a one of, I found one of the schematics. This one is by the one uh, Juanito Moore did for the for the DSP99 module to, to have that CV controllable, uh, the clock of that. Uh, it didn't work for this one. It worked, but like for a fraction of the uh, potentiometer, just like a millimeter, it turned from everything to nothing. So, and I tried all the other versions that I found out there, uh, but I did not manage to uh, fix that. So that's, it's just, it is possible, I'm sure it is possible, uh, and it's just that I didn't spend enough time or, or made enough effort to fix that, so I simply didn't have time. Uh, so uh, right now I'm going with this one, which is the LTC1799, which I did a whole video about, uh, if you want to check that out. So that's the clock of this one. And then here you have all the bits going out and there's some information here that you have a choice to do what whatever you like with each bit here. So these are this is just the example that I did. So the swap and swap on each side is connected with the uh, breaking jacks. So the breaking jack is connected uh, to the uh, input. Uh, so if you put a cable in here, the, the braking jack is connected to the switch. So if you put a, a cable in here, then the uh, switch is disabled and all the signal goes out from the cable. So you then can swap it into one of the other ports. I should have a cable to show that. So right now the least significant bit is going straight through. I can turn it off by tur turning the switch off, but I can also turn it off by adding a switch there. 
and then by connecting it there, which is also a breaking jack, I swap these two bits. So bit one, I swap to bit uh, four. However, I move the bit one to bit four. I, or actually, if I want to swap them, I need to add another cable from pin four to bit four to bit one. Or if we're talking bits, it's actually from bit three to bit zero. Also confusing. So anyway, so the breaking jack, uh, if, it, if there's nothing in there, it goes into the switch. So you can crush the bits like so. Any bit you like. And then the same on this side, as I've just explained. This is an example, you can just switch, skip the jacks if you don't want the swapping and you just want the crushing, so that's an option. Then it all goes into a super simple DAC digital to analog converter in this uh, R2R network, which I showed last time is up here with just a bunch of resistors, uh, all 1K. 1K, 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 all the way down. Goes into a small uh, summing circuit, inverting summing circuit here. Uh, and then here I added the, so this is a dual switch. You need to have a dual switch because you need to swap this whole path. Either you swap it to just a straight line like that, or you swap it so it goes in there through the R and the capacitor to ground to make it a low pass filter and then in and out. So that's otherwise this capacitor, if we only had a one switch, this capacitor would affect the signal no matter which way we put the switch. Into uh, an amplifier op amp, op amp in an amplifier configuration, so we can crank it up. Again, use what you got. I used a 20k potentiometer and a 2k2 uh, resistor to ground, which gives me an amplification of one and a little bit, so about one to 10 times amplification, which is good if there's a really low signal input. So that's it. Let's look one final time, uh, just this quickly in the rack. All right, just a quick walk through again what these different things do. So this is just a simple sinus wave here. You hear it very jagged right now. Uh, and there's still work to do. As you can see, this is just a half wave. The It doesn't go below zero volts. Uh, so it's actually cut off. So actually I would have to bias the uh, voltage up above uh, zero volts, uh, which I haven't done. So uh, actually one more op amp stage would be preferable. So let's first show what the low pass filter does. Like now it's quite a straight curve there. So much more like a uh, sinus wave, like a real wa uh, waveform. And if we go down in sample rate, you can see the bits uh, curving off. If we go turn off LPF slowly, you can see that the bits are low past each step of the way. That's it. Uh, if we go here, turning off bits, just like before, does that. Turning off the... And each bit acts differently. There we see the exact bits we're turning off. That one. There becomes a valley in the waveform at that place. And let's some swapping quickly as well. Swap one to four. Uh, uh, 
And of course it turns really weird because we're swapping the bits around. So not much left of the sinus wave anymore. Find a link to the schematics in the description. Um, as I said, uh, one more bias on the input would be nice. I uh, have to think about that. If you make one of these, let me know. It would be fun to hear uh, and see what kind of configuration you choose to do. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.